Alright, hey guys, what's going on? So today we're going to be talking about triads in quantum gravity. Triads are super interesting, and we'll see why they're super interesting. They're sort of a, uh, a consequence that you get from tetrads, and we're going to review those as well. Uh, but they are going to really be the big players here when it comes to start formulating an action principle for quantum gravity. And this is really going to help us get really or really attempt to be able to understand Ashtakar variables later on, okay? So we want to get this in our minds. So let's go ahead and get started. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure to also go on to my Patreon page if you want to support the channel and get the notes. I'm realizing right now that as I'm saying get the notes, I actually don't have my notes for quantum gravity on there. So I will be working on getting those on my Patreon page for all of you who are members to be able to benefit from uh, become a member on YouTube too, if that's something you want to do. It seems like I'm getting more uh, people following me on Patreon, which is kind of interesting. Um, so if there's something that I can do more on YouTube, uh, please feel free to hit uh, to go into the comments and tell me what you would like. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So triads are going to be sort of the spatial part of tetrads. And let's go ahead and start looking at this. So recall that what we had done <coughs> going all the way back to tetrads. So tetrads formed a local time tangent coordinate system where these matrices uh, were these matrices that reoriented the tangent space locally. Okay, so you have at every point in space time uh, some um, vector field, right? So let's just draw our our space-time, all right, and here, so here's our space-time, and at every point, again, we have some n-dimensional vector field, all right, so at every point, some n-dimensional vector field, at every point, we have some n-dimensional vector field, all right, so zooming in a little bit more, this is R, N, and so forth, all right, so R, N, and this is also R, N. So the, and the N is going to tell us the dimensionality of the manifold. Now in general relativity, we're typically talking about four dimensions, okay? And so in four dimensions, um, this N is four, and so we are talking about vectors that have four components, right? So if we, v mu is equal to some vector, and then this time, this time component, the, the zeroth component is typically the time component. So in physics language, right, this is gonna be v t, v x, v y, and v z, okay? And this time component, what these, what the tetrads did, the tetrads, is that they take the time component here, right, and this is the time component, our, t our temporal dimension of our vector space, right, so at this point in our vector field, at this point we have, so, so this is, we have a vector field at this point, which is what we're constructing here, right, we're constructing a vector field at this point in space-time, okay, in which the time component is tangent to our geodesic, okay? And that's, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be tangent, but we want things to be sort of special here. And so, and the idea here is that we always move forward on geodesics and the path that we take moving forward is the path of time, okay? And so the, so the tetrads reorient our system, right? So our internal system, internal system, these are all internal systems, so that the temporal dimension is oriented along our geodesic, okay? Geodesics are given by a short shield metric, some kind of metric, right? Okay, so this temporal dimension is oriented along our geodesic, which is what makes these special. Now, here's the caveat. You can, this thing, this temporal dimension, right, 
it, it's pointed in this direction, right? It's pointed along the geodesic. But our other dimensions, say this guy here and this guy here, well, it could look like this, right? It could look like this. So these things, so these vectors can move around while this stays uh, parallel. And so what the question becomes, what exactly is moving the spatial parts around? And what exactly is moving the temporal parts around? Well, the point here is that tetrads move everything. Triads are just going to move the spatial parts. Okay, and let's take a look at how this works. So we're now going to define a triad, a triad um, which is the external part of the tetrad, okay? And by external part we mean the spatial part, okay? So a triad is going to be given to us by an uppercase E and it's going, we're going to define it as the spatial part of the metric Q, which is what we defined during our ADM formalism, multiply or contracted over our tetrad, okay? Where this here is going to be zero. So let's look at this. So from a perspective, from the perspective of matrix multiplication, um, our tetra or our triad, right, our triad, looks like this. This is a this is a triad, okay? And the triad and this here is our tetrad. Or no 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 sorry. This here is our Q matrix or Q and this here is our triad matrix. So this is our uh, Q and this is our triad or tetrad. The reason that you can sort of intuitively understand that tetrads, tetra is four, that's four dimensional space time. Triads, tri, three, that's going to be three dimensions. The thing that's three dimensions is our spatial dimensions because we have X, Y, and Z. Right? So if we demand that EI or this here is zero, our matrix multiplication looks like this. Right? So all of the temporal stuff just vanishes. Okay, and we just have the spatial stuff all multiplied by this. And so what we have, so our triad is the spatial part of the tetrad, right? Because all we have going on now is just spatial stuff, no temporal stuff. We have a hey guys, what's going on? If you're interested in this video and want to learn more about loop quantum gravity, string theory, and so forth, what you can do is you can become a member of this channel and you can gain access to all the videos that become uploaded on this topic and future topics as well. Again, thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for watching. This channel keeps on growing and growing and I'm very excited to see where this is going to go in the future. So with that being said, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you like this kind of content. Make sure to become a member as well. Thank you and bye.